Hi guys, it's Chris at Cork and Crown, back in my cider shed, with some more cider to try. And it's another Ross and Y, and it's a it's a varietal, single varietal, that has a place close to my heart. Because it was the the dry cider that made me get dry cider. So uh, I visited, with very first visited Broom Farm, so Albert and Mike, um, Mike gave me... 15 bottles of single variety dry ciders. Just gave them to me. He said, go away and try all of them. And I have a bit of a sweet tooth. So I never really sat down and drank dry cider particularly. Uh, certainly not 15 bottles of it. But actually, it's exactly what I needed to do. Sit down, work my way through. I worked my, my way through methodically. I took notes. And I think I got to the major. And then I had a light bulb moment, which was, I like this stuff. Um, but it took me to sit down and really concentrate to get to that position. So now I love dry cider. And I still like sweet cider. So oh, the world is my oyster. As it were, the cider world is my oyster. Then your label, there you go. The major single variety, wild ferment. Um, what? That's the varietal, the major. This is what I was talking about, because I've mentioned that already. 8.1%. There you go. What does it say here? A supremely fruity variety that produces a full-flavoured, bittersweet cider. Major probably originated in Somerset in the mid-19th century, but it took a long time to become popular. We are lucky that it did, however, as it has become a firm favourite on Broom Farm. We fermented this cider in an American oak cask for six months and then matured it in a neutral container. It has notes of honey, apple crumble and juicy red apple with an exceptionally smooth and drinkable finish. So, American oak cask, I'm going to guess that's a bourbon cask because they've got a few of them knocking about. I think their American casks are all bourbon casks at the moment, I suspect. But they haven't been too bourbony, which is good. So this will probably have a hint of that bourbon thing. But not too much, I hope. Uh, I need a glass. Glass. Uh, I need a bottle opener. Bottle opener. Bingo. We're in business. So, probably the worst May I can ever remember. Uh, it's blowing an absolute gale out there at the moment. It's pissing down. Um, the door's been... Maybe calm down. It looks a bit brighter, but it's still grim, it's still raining. Um, Raymond the Wasp is not in his nest, so God knows where he is out there. He, must, he might have been blown away. We may never see him again if he's been out there today. And if he's not back, he's usually curled up there asleep this time of the evening, but he's not there. Might be a she, but for some reason, I just called him Raymond. I called her Raymond. Nice colour, amber, not quite bright, but not too hazy, a little bit hazy. There's a tiny prickle when I poured that out. Um, so, let's have a sniff. I think I can smell it already. Ooh, oh, watermelon and orange. And it's a uh, hint of bourbon. There's a hint, it's there, I've got it. Well, it's a very nice first smell. So yeah, I got the, the orange thing, definitely. The first thing I got was melon. That seems to be receding now. Yeah, apple, um, vanilla, uh, not in vanilla? Not sure. Ripe red apple, but I'm getting like an orangey character. I've been getting that a lot lately on things. I don't know why. I like it though. It smells fruity and spicy. It smells great. Let's try it. Holy shit. 8.1%. Feels quite big. Doesn't feel 8.1. Maybe getting a bit, bit of burn. So what is in that barrel? Is, is it bourbon? I feel like it is, but God, that has got some, that's got residual sugar. And it's 8.1%. There's no flipping where that's residual sugar from the apple and it's 8.1%. I can't believe it. There could have been enough. There wouldn't have been enough. You could get that much sugar in an apple, could you? Um, pressed October 2019, bottled March 2021. Um, that is rich, and yeah, actually, apple crumble. I'm getting now, I'm getting apple crumble absolutely. But still got that sort of fresh, ripe orange, not like a really citrusy orange character, it's like a just that orange character. I'm getting absolutely, it's all over my palate. Um, smells great. I've got the watermelon again. Or honeydew, cantaloupe, whatever, something like that. But 
that's resi that's got residual sugar in. I don't know if it hasn't fully fermented out, because uh, normally they had five milligrams per litre to get their sparkle. But there is residual sugar in there, and it's not that sparkling. So I'm wondering if it just hasn't fully fermented, so it's actually back sweetened, and it's and it's stayed. You know, they've sweetened. They haven't intended to back sweeten it. They've intended to bottle condition it. But the sugar has an alternate alcohol, so it's actually got residual sugar. It's got some legs on this as well. It's got some viscosity. Yeah, I think that must be what's happened. Don't know if the what the alcohol's inhibited the yeast because it's pretty alcoholic or what. But that is that is like that is like apple pie an orange or sort of Christmassy actually in a glass um, and watermelon <laughs> that is really interesting I really like it yeah I'm getting that it's like melon rind I'm getting on the nose along to all, all the other things I'm getting what else did they say they got what did they say uh, honey not really getting that uh, apple crumble, yeah, juice of apple, yeah, but yeah, smooth, drinkable, some residual sweetness in that. I mean, that's pushing medium almost for them. Uh, the door's just blown open. It's going to blow shut again. It's blown shut again. That's a beast. Yeah. You can get that. There's some sort of whiskey in there. When you take a big chug, you can get it. It's a beast. It's a beast. Big, fruity, rich, sweet, dessert-like beast. Now, I don't know if it's going to carry on fermenting in a bottle and it's going to get drier and more sparkling. That's possible. don't think we're doing any harm if it did, to be honest. I think it'll still be delicious. But that is a bit of a monster, that. Um, but I actually quite like it. <laughs> I quite like it. Like I said, I've got a bit of a sweet tooth. And that's, that's, that's you know, that suits my palate. You know, if it was dry, I'd still like it, I think, because of that concentration of fruit in it. But boy, oh boy. So there you go interesting the major single varietal batch d80 because i do so many batches the batch number is very important because if you get a different batch it won't taste the same i guarantee uh yeah there you go batch d80 of the major from ross on y get some and try it if you haven't got a sweet tooth at all you might get a shock if you're used to their ciders this is this is richer this has got more sugar in than you would normally expect from them for me, yeah, drink it all day. Well, not all day, I think 1%. Drink it until I pass out. Yeah, whatever time of day that happens to be. All right, guys, thank you for joining me in my shed. Oh, look, in case you're wondering what this is, this is my, um, my Three Floyds. Ah, you know, Three Floyds. Three Floyds Brewery in Munster, Indiana. One of the world's great breweries. Uh, I was there about, I don't know, eight, nine years ago. So it's quite old. I don't get out much because that actually scares the kids. Right, anyway, do join me again in my cider shed. But until then, empty glass. Cheers. <laughs>